I grew up in a small town in southwest Colorado called Telluride. I think I was about three years old the first time I put on skis. It will always be a huge part of me and a huge part of my life and something that I love and enjoy. And When I was asked to come to Uganda, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was expected of me, but I was just like, sure, sign me up. I want to do it. I had basically lived this life of privilege and almost luxury in a sense. I've gotten to travel the world for my sport and done amazing things and visited amazing places. And here were these people who had been through a lot of adversity and a lot of hardship. And I don't want to take anything for granted. I think for me, the power of sport is the power to kind of break down barriers. Uganda is so green. It's beautiful. It's actually not what I expected at all either. It's lush and there's forests. It's really amazing, but it's not what I expected. I think I have like a picture in my mind of what I think it might be like and I don't know if that picture is gonna be better than what I'm expecting it to be or worse. I don't know, I don't wanna like think the wrong thing if that makes sense. So I'm kinda just trying to keep an open mind and I'm excited to, to see it and I really kinda have no idea what I'm getting myself into. It's huge. It's so much bigger than I thought it was. And as far as I can see that way, there's little dwellings and huts. And then as far as my eyes can go in all directions, all the way over to there, it continues. That's like a major city. It's just crazy to think about how many people are displaced that are forced to leave their countries for different reasons, whether it's war or the color of their skin, discrimination, sexuality, it's just crazy. How's it going? High five? There are so many kids here. <laughs> Is this how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I started a trend. <laughs> High fives! I love it. They're all so cute and excited. Like, I feel like anything I do, they think I'm like the coolest. So, it's basically what I wished my entire childhood in high school was like. <laughs> okay, go! <laughs> When I think about a refugee camp, I, I, I feel like I think of something that's temporary. I think of these people that are looking for a sanctuary, a safe place, but then I realize here that this isn't temporary. It's really permanent, and it's sad in that way, but some of these people have been born here in this refugee camp. I mean, this place has been here for 50 years. There's people that are here from all different countries for all different reasons. Um, some of them were forced to come here, some of them chose to come here to get away from whatever they were facing back home. Salama. Yes. Where, where did you come from? 
how does it feel to be here? Does it feel good to have somewhere to be, or is it sad because you had to leave? <laughs> Do you mind telling me the story of the day that you left? I feel like useless and uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Hey guys. Johnny Twanyanzi Malexi. Jewe mva mu muko kugabagana mu mu kugabagana abarundi batemera yuko bashora kuvuga. Jina langu ni Bahati Buhendo Silvano. Bo mimi kama mimi nilitoka Kongo, nitoka Kongo je usalama mdogo. Sao tukikuwa tukikala hata nyumbani, tutaona watu wanafika hata usiku, wanagonga mlango. Kisha kugonga mlango, kama ukufungua, wanafungua na ngufu. Wanaingia hata kuwaua watauwa, kama unapesa wanabeba, kama wakati moja wanakamata hata mwuki wanamupeleka, au wanenda wanauwa. Respondo ya mfasha kugira ngo ibzo vivazo vizyo senda vile ngele, Kukerubu, je ubuzi kuhiru kani hobuzi mapanga. Kuhera kwa ni hompo na yuko shwara kuhu ubuzi mapanga. Bushwa ku kutebimbere. Why did you leave Burundi to come here? Utoi wanje na ubali wa mufashi, ba muda na muga shwa shwa kumiji. Nubali runti anda vugati le kandonde ubuzi mahandi. Do you feel like here at the refugee camp you're welcomed and there's no discrimination? No, there's no discrimination. I don't see I don't see it. How old were you when you began running? My sport is in the Winter Olympics, um, so I feel like you've probably never seen it, but do you want to see? Yes, yeah. Is that really? Yeah, it's me. Yeah. It's you. You. Yeah. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> you could if you, yeah? you... You just have to learn, but you could. Yeah, to run. I can't do it. <laughs> Today, running out of the camp was kind of symbolic just for the way that they escaped from their lives through sport. To be able to run and just be free for a moment and not be thinking about anything else, I think is really beautiful. Jinangu ni Ivan Mwembia, mina miaka ishireni na tano. Napenda kunyangula chuma, yani nilikuwa mtoto sana. 
How's it going, Gus? Gus, nice to meet you. It's kind of amazing what they built here. Wow. You guys made this? It's actually really impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. We're getting a workout here. How do I put it back down? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think it's amazing what you've done, and I know you don't know how much they all weigh, but I think they're perfect for working out. And that big one, I think, is actually more than 60 kilograms. It's, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> for sure, it's exceeding 60 kgs. Yeah, definitely. It's amazing. It, it shows you that you can do a lot with not a lot. Homie is jacked. Kwa kweli kuishi mahali watu wanataka kuwa kila kila wakati una, unasikia ni kama utakufa kila time unaweza kasikia kama hapo wakinishika na kufa unakuwa ukishitarisha kwa kifo kila 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 nyakati unakuwa ukiogopa unajua kama hapo maisha yangu iko ndani tu ya mkono wa Mungu Are you happy to be here now? Baka hapo bado nafurahi kwani hapo na na king wanichunga na ina you guys are super strong. You must work out here all the time. Asante kwa hiyo ila ngufu ilikuwa ila inaenda na punguka kukosa vya kukula magi ya kurudisha energy juu tunapoteza energy mingi sana ila sare kipira sio Enjoy na tukoseaka. Umetuko na kuraji ya kufanya. Hii kazi juu tunaipenda hiko mudamu. Hila vya kure kipere njoo. Binoza tukoshone. Jukama atufanya hii tunasikiaka mwili. Haiko vizuri kabisa. Njoo nyumbani hapa. Salon hii. Enjoo salon. Hii ni chumba ya, ya vijana. Yeah, I can't. Oh, so this is their kitchen. We've got a little bit of bread and a little bit of chicken. Is this, uh, this, this bedroom is your bedroom? Yeah. And then the other one is uh, the kids? Brothers. 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 It's like about a six foot by eight foot bedroom. It's really small and it's him and his wife and their three children in this room, and then his brother's family is in the other room. 
Well, I mean, I think if, if I lived here, definitely I would want to be outside. Definitely, I think playing sports and working out would give you something to do and kind of a sense of purpose and, I don't know, maybe even a sense of identity. When I'm back in the States, on those days when I'm trying to find motivation to go to the gym and I'm feeling lazy, I think I'll definitely think back to these people here and remember how much work and dedication they demonstrated and I'll remember how easy I have it. <laughs> it's interesting to me to see the way people have made lives for themselves here even though there's not a lot of opportunity, there's not work, there's scarce education and despite all that people have found ways of entertaining themselves and kind of escaping from it. They're amazing at tumbling. This is 100% what I would be doing if I lived in this refugee camp because when I was a kid, this is literally all I did was run around jumping off stuff. It's literally the worst tumbling track I've ever seen. It's like bumpy. Yeah, there's like big mounds and rocks and he just did a round off to like seven back handsprings in a row and running front flips. Amazing, man. <laughs> but it kind of makes me sad because it's like, it just shows you how the people that are in this camp are kind of just like the exact same people that you would have anywhere else in the world. There's teachers and there's athletes and there's these gymnasts and they're so talented. And like I showed him my sport on my phone and he was like, that's so cool. Like. If I had the opportunity to do that, I'd be really good at that. And I'm kind of thinking like, yeah, you totally would. You're absolutely right. And that sucks that you don't have that opportunity. And I asked him if he thought he would leave and try and, I don't know, make a career out of something and go somewhere else. And for safety's sake, he won't ever leave. He said he'll be here forever. So it's pretty sad. I, mean, I played soccer and hockey in high school and then obviously I ski but um, I don't know I'm not a very good basketball player and they look like they take it pretty seriously so <laughs> it's definitely street ball but it looks fun. Hey Gus how are you? So you have to stop then we we go to play after. Okay. The girl in the back is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because we play with that every day. Ah, Chilango is still a Murumbuti for her. Nikuja, who could shoot Kwanja, quit to Congo and security. Babango, I'm going to make a good for the long. Alkwana tetea wanawake wanawake walikuwa na bakwa. Jo gouvernement kamfatilia na jo kafinde ikamwalevi. Kishika ikalunguza nyumba yetu yote na vitu na jo mamangu tukakimbia naye. Babangu sai atujua acha atuyo kwa makwa. Il y a un masquette en 2013. Il y a un masquette en 2013. Il y a un masquette en 
Même la Jessica, comme ça, nous convient. For me, being able to partake in all these different sports with these refugees and seeing their attitudes and just being able to feel their spirit is kind of the spirit that the Olympics embodies. It's that of inclusion and the whole world coming together for the love of sport. And I think that that's exactly what these refugees have done. They've come together from different countries and they've built an attachment to one another through sport. Yeah, nice play. Yeah, I felt like I didn't do so good, but it was fun. Uh, I'm exhausted. I'm I'm super winded. It's hot here, and it was just a lot of running. But they're uh, amazing. They're really great basketball players. I'm not not a great basketball player, but it was a lot of fun. Feeling good. It was it was really enjoyable. When you left. Congo, can you tell me about how you actually got here and the journey that you took and how long it took to get from there to here? Je suis arrivée ici pendant la nuit. J'étais trop surprise de voir des maisons en bois, de voir des, des petites chambres. Vraiment, c'était une journée vraiment misérable. What is your hope? Is your hope to return to Congo one day? What is the biggest thing, I guess, that stops you from trying to go somewhere else? Ici, je suis en sécurité. C'est pourquoi je ne veux pas aller au Congo. Au Congo, il y a trop de guerres, l'insécurité. Ici, je me sens un peu. For me, sport has always been an amazing way to kind of escape my everyday life and escape stresses. For you, do you feel like when you're playing basketball, you're able to forget about everything else that's going on in your life? When I play basketball, I forget all the problems, I forget everything that's going on in the Congo. But when I enter the house, I think about my life, everything is still going on. Do you feel like you have to train hard and work hard at it? On peut vraiment les jeux sérieux parce qu'on ne sait jamais. On peut avoir la chance d'aller même en barrer un jour et jouer avec les gens, les les gens qui habitent là-bas, les basketteurs de là. Vraiment, on prend les jeux sérieux. Is that what your dream is or your goal to to go play in Barra and other cities and play basketball and get to travel and do it? Sport has really given these refugees an escape. I think it's given them something to look forward to each day. They don't have a lot else to look forward to, and they're able to just be in the moment and be present with their sport, and I think it's an amazing release for them. We are here at the church. Estella sings in the church choir, and so we came to check it out, and it sounds amazing, I can already hear it. I think the best word I can use is haunting, because you think about all of their past. Their families were murdered, or they had to escape from their country. Like, there's so much sadness in all of these people's pasts, and then this music is so beautiful and pure. I think the contrast from one to the other is just really haunting. It's been honestly pretty bittersweet to spend time in the camp. I feel like I've met a lot of really inspiring people and my horizons have certainly been broadened. But it's hard, man, it's hard to see this. Like, it's not really a fun life that a lot of these people are living. I mean, there's not like a light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of these people. There's not the hope of returning to their home country. So they're kind of just like, no, I'll be here forever and for better or for worse, they're okay with it. 
For me, a lot of the positives that I found in the camp were when we were playing sport with the different refugees, whether it was basketball or lifting weights or running. That was a really great release for those people. They were able to kind of be in the moment and be present and just enjoy something. And it was beautiful to see, to be able to come here and just partake in these different sports with all these refugees has been really beautiful. It's been really fun. I think that they've been excited to meet me and none of them have ever seen skiing before and they don't know who I am, but they're excited that I'm here and I'm really honored and humbled to be here. And it's cool to just be able to hang out with them. And a lot of the times we can't speak, but it doesn't really matter because sport and music and the different things that we got to enjoy here are just universal.